Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1226, the Surprise Cube pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. This die set makes a really cute two-inch cube that is operated with a rubber band, and so then it can be put inside a card or stacked up. You can do all sorts of fun techniques with it. But there is also a companion die called the slider box for when you want to use the cube as a just standalone surprise cube that would pop out of the box. And you'll be able to fit three fully decorated cubes inside that slider box, which is sold separately. And one way to personalize the cubes would be to use photos on them. And so I thought for the assembly video, I would make a personalized travel card. Congrats. And then inside three surprise cubes and a pop-up banner that says enjoy Paris with some pictures of a trip that I took to Paris many years ago. Now, unless you want an instant reveal when the card comes out of the envelope, then you'll want to incorporate some kind of closure into the card. So I'm going to use our flap enclosure die set. There are 11 pieces in this die set. It is the largest one that is the surprise cube itself. It is half of the cube, so you need to cut it twice for each cube. And I'm going to make two cubes on the video here today, so I've cut it four times. In order for the cube to assemble correctly, both pieces need to be identical when you start, which means the same side as forward. If you flip one over, you can definitely see the difference. You can't see the score lines nearly as well on the back. So just make sure that they're both face up, which means the score lines are easily visible, and then mark an X so that you don't accidentally flip one over. Okay, so this is what we are making. This is the cube ready for a rubber band. So the way you get there is you start by working the folds. And I like to do the three folds in the center first. So right in between in the center is a valley fold. And then the two on the other side of that little rubber band holder are mountain folds. So I like to fold towards myself first and then reverse it. And that brings those two sides together and creates that rubber band side. Now, every other fold in the piece is a mountain fold, meaning you're folding away from yourself. I just think it's easier to fold towards myself first and then reverse it. I happen to be using a 100 pound smooth cardstock for these cubes. However, cardstock weight is not that important with the surprise cube. You can definitely make them out of textured cardstock, 80 pound cardstock. If you use 65, the lightest cardstock, then you'll probably have to add your decorator pieces before you finish the assembly. So if you don't want to have to add your decorator pieces before assembling, then just stick with your 80 or 100 pound cardstock. And I am just finishing out all of those mountain folds. Okay, so you are going to want a nice strong glue for this. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And I'm going to get in there now and seal up that little rubber band holder. So I just need the glue all over one side and then I'm just going to pinch from the inside of the cube until those two come together. And I really want that to be a nice straight connection right there. Everything should line up on the inside as well, but I'm mostly just looking at the outside. And what I like to do is actually fold the shelf to one side, give it a pinch, and then I just turn around and fold it the other way and give it a pinch as well so that it just kind of learns to just be right there in the center between that side of the cube. All right, and that's going to be repeated on the second one. Adhesive down into the section all over one side. Then from inside the cube, I pinch those two pieces together, looking at the outside to make sure it looks straight and that the corners line up, and then just press that shelf to either side. Now I have two identical cube halves, and I'm going to use one of the tapered tabs to glue the two halves together. So there will be adhesive all over that tapered tab, and what's important is that I'm gluing a tab to a side. I'm not gluing a tab to a tab. I need the tab sticking out the top of the other piece to connect the other side. So it's just tab underneath the flat side of the cube to join the two together. There are two size rubber bands that work great in the surprise cube. And one of them you may be familiar with if you've ever put together any of our pop-up ball dies. And that is my good old standby, the Soft Stretch Number 12 Pale Crepe Gold Rubber Bands. And I buy a big giant box of those off of Amazon. But I discovered an even smaller rubber band, the Firm Stretch Number 8 Rubber Bands, also from Alliance and also purchased off of Amazon, work particularly well in our new Bambox pop-up, and they also work in the Surprise Cube. 
Now, if you don't want to purchase a giant box of either of those sizes, we do now offer on our website small little baggies of both the number eights and the number twelves. Just go to our website, karenberniston.com, look under tools and accessories. I will use a number eight in one cube and a number 12 in the other. So before I can connect the tapered tab, I want to get the rubber band in. So for the number eight, I'm just going to bring the two shelves together. And then with the number eight, I'm just going to open it and get it into the holes on one side and into the holes on the other side. I'm going around both shelves at one time. So essentially, I just have them now connected with a rubber band like this. Okay, on the number 12 cube, I am not going to do bring them together. I'm going to start with one shelf and go around one time, cross the rubber band, and then back around another time so that that will loop the rubber band one extra time through that first shelf. Then I'm going to stretch it over and into the holes on the other shelf. And then I'm just going to look at it and see if I feel like that's enough tension. I really want those to come a little closer together. So on that second side, I'm going to wrap the rubber band one more time around. And now I can see that I just have those shelves kind of coming pretty close together right now, just like I would with the number eight. So that is a good amount of tension. And now I can seal up the cube. Once again, I'm going to use my strong glue and the tapered tab to close up the cube, adding the adhesive all over the tapered tab and then just getting it to the edge of the other side of the cube. And I'm just taking my time with that to make sure that the corners line up and that it's nice and straight. And I tend to just wipe away any glue that squishes out. It does dry clear, but I can also just take a white eraser to it if I need to get off any glue smudges afterwards. Okay, now switching over to my number eight cube, I'm going to do the same thing. So I add adhesive all over the tapered tab, and then I just get it right to the edge and take my time to make sure that it's straight and that the corners are lining up. I have four more tapered tabs to connect before the cube is done. So they're the little small ones on the sides of the cube. So two on each side of the cube, here and here. And then flipping it over, you'll see two more here and here. Now to figure out where those connect, I first need to stretch the cube into the flat position. So that means that I press the corners that are opposite the rubber band sides until it flattens the other way. And now it's going to fight me. It's going to want to pop back open again. So I have to hold it in that position while I connect all four of those tapered tabs. So just like with the ones on the main body of the cube, I add my adhesive to the tapered tab. I tuck it in and in this flat position, it will line up with the triangle across from it. I wipe away any glue and I just depend on either my decorator pieces or my white eraser if my glue smudges show up even after it's dried. And then once again, on this side, I have to keep this thing flat. As soon as I let go, it's going to pop open. So I just have to really make sure that I'm keeping it nice and flat while I tuck those tapered tabs in and connect them to the triangle opposite. Okay, those two are done. And now I'm going to turn it around to give me access to the other two tapered tabs. Again, keeping that cube flat. So I'm not letting it expand until I get all four of those tapered tabs connected. Now you might be wondering, could I use tacky tape? You can try it. I have definitely found that glue holds up better though. All right, once all four are connected, then you can let the cube go and it will come into that cube shape, although there might be a pretty good gap on your open sides here. And they, that will seal up once you've trained the cube that those sides are supposed to fold inward. So just press those to fold inward, maybe hit those sides with a bone folder to get a more crisp fold and then you'll find that when it pops up, it will seal those sides much closer together. To close it, you have to press the two opposite corners where the cut is. If you try to press the rubber band sides, they will not close. So it has to be the two that are on either end of the cut on those sides. If you press those, then it will flatten down. Okay, I'm going to go much, much faster on the other cube because you can back up and watch the slow one if you want to see how it goes together step by step. But just giving a quick visual of what I did before, which is stretching the rubber band out into that flat position and then attaching all four of those tapered tabs. Now, sometimes the glue maybe didn't set up great the first time or you don't want to sit there and hold it. You can use something like little quilting clips or something to hold those closed while you work on it. So it doesn't matter which rubber band is used, they both work wonderfully. 
Okay, I made a third cube and now I'm figuring out which way these cubes collapse so that I can label them for decorating. So I want the bottom two cubes to collapse to the back. So I've found that position on both cubes and now I'm going to give myself a T for the top and then an F for the front and then I'll go ahead and just put a B on the bottom and that way I know which side doesn't need any decoration at all because it's going to just glue to the card. Okay, so there's my bottom two. Now for the top one, I actually want it to collapse forward. So it's gonna sit on top of the other two and then collapse towards the front of the card so that in the popped up position, I'll get this cool little sort of triangle of cubes, but in the flat position, it won't add to the footprint. It'll just collapse down forward on top of the other two. So again, T, F, and B for me so that I know which one is the top and the front. Remember, there are 11 dies in the set, so the other 10 are decorator pieces. You get two matching big squares, two matching decorative edge squares. You've got two big triangles. Those are used to decorate the sides of the cube. And then you also get two decorative edge triangles that are smaller that will fit inside those bigger triangles. And then the last two dies are stars. So you get a big star, and then you get one that will cut four small stars. So what I did is use the decorative edge smaller triangles and squares to cut all of my photos for the cubes. And then I used the larger squares and triangles to make the matte pieces for behind the photos. Now, if you wanted a little bit larger photos, you could just skip the matte part and just use the larger square and triangle to cut your photos. But I liked the layered look. And then I'm using those square photos on the tops and the fronts of the cubes. Now I chose to use entirely scenery shots on my card and so then the ones that have to get cut into triangles to fit the sides, it didn't really much matter that I cut those scenery shots into triangles. I wouldn't suggest it for people's faces. So if you were doing a more personalized photo cube where you're using people's faces on the square sides, then maybe on these sides it could either be a scenery shot or just some pattern paper. And the best way to put pressure against your decorations so that you can make sure they're really sealed on there is to flatten the cube and give the pressure in the flat position. And then I repeated that process with the triangle photos for the other side of the cube. So now four sides of my cube are decorated and then for the back I'm just going to use layered pattern paper for that. So I just decided not to put photos on the backs of the cubes. You would have to turn the card around to see them so I just decided pattern paper would be fine. Now this is my top cube, so it collapses forward, whereas my two bottom cubes are going to collapse backwards. And I just did the exact same thing, covering those with photos, both for the front and the top and the sides. And then on the back I used pattern paper and then nothing on the bottom. And then I had an idea, wouldn't it be cool if there was a sign floating above the top cube? The edge decoration of the rectangles in the slider box matches the edge decorations in the surprise cube. So those two dies work perfectly together. I used two of those rectangles for my sign. And then for the word Paris, I cut it using our alphabet die set, the letters out of both photographs and black cardstock, and then layered them. And then I just used a piece of clear plastic to be the signpost, and that way it will appear to be floating when the card is popped up. Now, since I only thought of this idea after I'd already decorated the back of the cube, I just carefully peeled off that decoration so that I can attach the signpost to the cube and then put the decorative squares over it. So um, if you were making this card just like me, just put the signpost on before you've decorated the back of the top cube. And I've decided just to have the top of the sign match the cube in the closed position so that it doesn't add anything to the overall footprint of the card I will need. So when it flattens down, it hasn't added any extra space to it. And now my pattern paper squares will cover the signpost. And obviously you can change out what the sign says depending on what photos or decorations you're putting on the cubes and the sign is also completely optional. For a card, I started with a piece of cardstock, five and a half inches by 12 inches, and then I made two score lines in it, one at six inches and one at six and a quarter inches. I am making a top fold card, so both of the folds will go in the same direction to make a gusseted fold, and the shorter panel is on top. Then for a flap, I'm using the piece out of our flap enclosure die set. Now that die only has one fold in it, it's a single fold flap. 
I wanted it to be a double fold gusseted flap, so I just made a new score line a quarter inch up from the first one, the one that the die had made, and that way I'll have that same quarter inch gusset as the other side of my card. And then I'm going to use adhesive all over the tapered tab on that flap, and then center it on the bottom edge of my card. The die cut flap is five inches wide, so I'm centering it in that five and a half inch space. The flap enclosure die set also comes with a decorator piece to, for the flap, and so I've used that die and cut it out of a piece of pattern paper. I just found a cool piece of pattern paper in my stash. It's an older one from 49 and Market. I can only add the decorator piece to the outside portion of the flap, what you see on the front of the card, because I'm going to work on the closure before I do any decorating on the inside of the card. And I've cut a piece of the same pattern paper to fit the front panel of the card. So I've just cut those to be a little bit smaller than each panel of the card. So the way this closure works is that you stack up three spacers. There's a die in the set that will cut all six and you just use some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the cardstock before die cutting so that those spacers are adhesive. And then the washers that will cut a set of two you just kind of decide where you want the washers to go, and then that's the location for the spacers that you're stacking up three. I went stash diving and found some pearl brads to use for my closure. So first I'm going to pierce a hole down through the spacer set, making sure I open up the card so that it doesn't pierce all the way through. And then for the upper one that's not going to have the twine, I just need to use my brad to attach the washer over the top of the spacers, Brad goes through the front side of the card, and then I open up the prongs on the inside. Okay, so same process for the flap, except for this time, before I add the washer with the brad, I'm going to put some twine through the spacers and through the hole, and then I'll just tack that down on the inside using a tape runner. Then I add my washer using the brad. Now I can add the decorator piece inside the flap to cover up the end of the twine and the brad prongs. And I've also cut pieces of that same pattern paper to fit the inside panels of the card. So now I'll go ahead and glue those on. The upper one will cover those brad prongs. Okay, cube placement. My bottom two cubes are going to flatten to the back, so in that flat position, I can position them in the card where they're going to stay in the card in the flat position. So on the right and left side, I'm making sure that the points are in, and then in the upper center, I'm making sure that I can still close the card. And I'm just going to use a pencil to mark the two outer corners so that I remember where I decided to place those. I will be generous with my glue on the bottom of the cube so that they don't fly all the way out of the card when it's open. So just looking for my pencil line for placement and then flattening it and making sure that I position it so it stays within the card. And just holding it for a second so the glue can set up and then when I let go that cube is now placed in the card. And then I'll do the same with the other one. So it's going to flatten and sit next to the first one. I've got my little pencil line to kind of remind me about where I started it making sure that it stays within the card and then giving it a good press until it sets up. Now, because I put those cubes at an angle, when they flatten down, they're going to move further apart. And so what that means is that my upper cube can only attach to one of the bottom cubes. So I decided it's going to attach here on the left side. It wouldn't matter either way, but I only want adhesive on the bottom cube that the top cube is going to attach to and only in the section that the top cube is going to cover. So with my card popped open, I can look and see that I like the placement, and then I'm going to carefully close everything down so that I can give it a really good press in the closed position. And my glue was being stubborn because I was trying to attach to a glossy photograph, so I even used a clip to clip those two together to give it some extra time. But then once I am sure that the glue is set up, I remove the clip, and then my pop-up will start working. The pop-up is working great, so now I can collapse everything down and give that closure a try. I just need to wind that twine between the two washers to keep the card closed. And then when I want to open it, of course, just reverse the process, and then those cubes will pop up. So I have room in my card to make the title even higher, so I decided to go ahead and add the word enjoy from our enjoy the ride die set attached to the top of the sign so that it will actually say enjoy Paris. 
I am a fan of simple card fronts for elaborate pop-up cards, so I am just going to use the decorator dies from the set on a picture of the Eiffel Tower, and then the word congrats from our word set 8 set. The Surprise Cube really just has it all because it's easy to assemble, it is an amazing reveal, and it's completely generic. You can customize that any way you want. You certainly do not have to use photos on your cubes. They are the perfect size to fit all of our little animals and charms, or maybe you're going to decorate them with some of your favorite stamps. My finished card measures five and a half by six with gusseted folds, so I would probably use an A9 envelope for mailing. This one is a 5x7 card with a magnetic closure, just saying we make a great team, and I've decorated those three surprise cubes with our sports charms. And the foundation of this card is so generic, it really could be decorated with any of our charm sets. I love to end assembly videos with some inspiration from our very talented design team. Here's a cool gender reveal slider box that Lois Bach made where the outside is decorated equally in blue and pink. And then when you open it, the pink cubes fly out, indicating that it is a girl. Sue Small Kreider made this slider box, Will You, and then three cubes inside and one of them says, Marry Me. And she's used the wedding charms on the cubes as well. I like this clever use of the surprise cube by Nikki where the baseball's on a string and then the force of the surprise cube popping up actually flies the baseball. Lois used a bunch of different Christmas papers on surprise cubes and then put them in a Christmas themed slider box. Suzanne Smith used the surprise cube for a pair of new baby cards where she's used the surprise cube as alphabet blocks. And I like her location, how she stacked the blocks. On the blue one, she personalized the letters as well. There are so many cute pattern papers out there, and this card by Jen Webster shows off some Yeti-themed paper, Are You Yeti for Christmas? And then she just stacked up three surprise cubes that are decorated with that pattern paper. And then stamps. Stamps are going to fit wonderfully on the surprise cube. Here is a great idea by Lois using the surprise cube and the slider box together. The bigger snowflake out of our holiday charms actually fits the side of the surprise cubes perfectly, as you see here in this holiday slider box cube combo by Frances Byrne. Such a cute combination from Karen Aiken, where she's incorporated a couple cubes in a slider box, but then also a snowman on a BAM box. And Karen reports that as the cubes fly, the snowman almost always lands correctly. Surprise cubes flying out of the slider box to celebrate the new year is a great idea by Sandy Diller. Lois Bach has used a magnetic closure on her card, and then inside are three surprise cubes decorated with the sports charms. For this birthday-themed project, Sandy Diller used the shapes that come in the BAM box instead of the squares on the sides of the cubes. The Surprise Cube pop-up is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com, starting December 12, 2022. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can purchase these dies, as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.